Congress added three new national parks from 2019 to 2021. Having been to all the other national parks in the lower 48, we just had to go see the new parks. Come along with us on our fantastic 14-day, 2,000-mile adventure to 13 national park locations. Many of the parks we visited have their own videos on this channel, so check them out for the full tour. Links are in the description box below. Good morning, we're starting our trip, a two-week trip through North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, Ohio, and West Virginia to visit two of the newest national parks and many stops along the way. So top of the morning to you and we'll get ready to go on our little adventure. Mm -hmm. So say hi. Last minute breakfast. <laughs> yeah, she's eating uh, food. Chinese bowls. Mm -hmm. So anyway, here we go on our little adventure. On our first day, we uh, hit a lot of rain and the forecast says it's gonna be raining for the next two or three days. So it looks like we're gonna be doing a lot of our hiking in the rain at the Gray Smokies. We're now into the mountains. Still in rain with lots of cloud. And uh, the clouds are so low, it makes mountains look really uh, pretty. Well, maybe not pretty, but very foggy and zen-like. Part of the uh, way of getting to this Great Smoky Mountain is going through the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is another national park site that stretches for miles between North Carolina and Virginia. And the road There's is beautiful. Enchanted. <laughs> yes, a little ribbon there. That tree is We arrive at the Okolnalufti Visitor Center of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, an old favor of ours on the eastern side of the park. Right on cue, the rain stopped, just in time. We did our park business, which was to get the all-important stamp and talk to the ranger about the places to visit. We wanted to stretch our legs and the three-mile Oklahoma Fluthi River Trail looked perfect, so we thought. The trail started with the Mountain Farm Museum, which was a collection of restored farm buildings from the late 1800s. Right after the Mountain Farm Museum, we ran into a herd of elk in the woods, right next to the trail. We stared at them for 20 minutes, but they just ignored us. What a treat on our first stop of the day. Well, that was supposed to be a um, three mile walk, but we don't, I don't think we went more than a quarter of a mile. We yeah. saw a bunch of elk that was uh, doing their mating calls and talking to each other. Yep. And, uh, but the elk was too close to the trail, so can't get past, so we're... On our way back. On our way back, yep. Having fun the first day, we saw elk already. That's yep. pretty good. Hey, just up the road from the visitor center is the Mingus Mill and the Mingus Mill Trail. So we're going to Mingus Mill, which is a working mill, at least for tourists. We'll see what it looks like. Very quick stop. And the rain has held off, which is wonderful. Let's go. Go check out the mill. Mingus Mill was the largest crisp mill in the Smokies with a 200 foot long wood flume. You can buy the cornmeal produced by this working mill. We bought some the last time we were here, several years ago. Just up the road was a traffic jam, a sure sign of wildlife. Sure enough, there was a herd of elk in the open field, just grazing away. We're heading up to Clemens Dome now. Given the drive, the way it looks right now, I don't think we're going to see anything. But we will see above the cloud. You know, even then, we're going to just see the clouds. But nonetheless, we're heading up to Clean Stone in the fog. This is um, stop number three of our first day. Now, there is a trail here that goes up to that observation deck that you see. We're not going up there today. The reason is, you can't see anything. But this is supposed to be the tallest point uh, of the Smokies at 6,643 feet. It is not the tallest point in North Carolina, however. That belongs to Mount Mitchell, which has got over 7,000 feet. We'll go into the information center and hopefully we can go get a step. I think that will be it for the day.
because it doesn't make any sense to go all the way up to see nothing but cloud. On our way to the hotel on the west side of the park, we stopped for a short hike near the Sugarlands Visitor Center before we ended our first day. What a great way to start. So after about a half a mile walk from the Sugarland Visitor Center, you see Cataract Falls right behind me. It's a little bit trick over water. Not bad for a half a mile walk. Day two of our great adventure, we're going through the Smoky Mountains today. The forecast calls for all the rain today, so it looks like we're going to get wet. But if you look at up in the sky right there, it looks a little promising. I don't know how long the rain's going to hold off, but we're going to try. Traffic jam on the Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail. And I don't know whether or not this is a wildlife jam or some other reason why this is all jammed up. Gotta have patience when you come to a popular park like the Great Smokies. After sitting in traffic for a while, we finally got to the Grotto Falls Trailhead for our first stop of the day. Grotto Falls. Uh, the claim to fame for this waterfall is that you can walk behind the waterfall. One of the only ones you can do that around here. And uh, let's go. Let's go find out what it looks like when you go behind it. Gotta be careful because it can be a little slippery. what it looks like from the other side of the waterfall. We spent all morning driving the five and a half mile Roaring Motor Nature Trail and doing the short hike to Grotto Falls. Now, it's time for lunch. Yes. It is Loretta's favorite time of the day. My favorite time. Hopefully we will be able to eat this without a bear running around because there's a little black bear running around. And hopefully he doesn't sniff out the food. Well, we had a nice hike this morning. Yes, we did. Build up the appetite. And poor Loretta, she only had a cookie for uh, breakfast. Yes. So she is uh, famished. I'm starving. I should have ordered a foot long off for myself. All right, I'm going to enjoy Black Forest Ham Subway Sandwich are <laughs> yeah. staple for national park trips after yeah. a hike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good, as usual. Kate's Cove was our next stop, but we had to get through the Gatlinburg traffic to get there. One of the stops on Kate's Cove trail is John Oliver's cabin. So we are going to go check out the cabin. Well, the old joke goes, what's the best way to spot wildlife? Look for a traffic jam. And boy, we have a traffic jam. Apparently there are four black bears out in the meadow and uh, people are stopping to look at them. After Kate's Cove, we decided to call it for the day. Tired of sitting in traffic all day. On day three of our trip, we got an early start for Laura Falls because it's notorious that Laura Falls is um, very popular and the parking lot just turned in. Now on the way here, it was raining on and off. It was raining pretty hard at places. And um, we're lucky, so far at least, you know, knock on people wood, that uh, we got a little bit of blue sky and it looks like it's not raining that hard. Uh, Loretta thinks that we're crazy for coming out here this early. Uh, it's about 8.30, just a little before 8.30. And you can see the parking lot is uh, probably the third floor already. It's a rainy day, so just imagine what it looks like on a good day. So come on, let's go for a hike. Um, and uh, if you're going to hike Laura Falls, get here early.
Stop number two on day three was the Sinks, which was just down the road from Laura Falls. The Sinks is a little waterfall, but it is quite uh, powerful here. And it's one of the top sites because it's very easy to get to. It's just right off the road, you can come over a park and work, you know, walk maybe 30 yards and be able to get a grand view just like this. Okay, we're starting at the Alum Cave Trail and uh, we're going up to probably the Arch Rock and that's about it because we're short on time. But look at this beautiful, beautiful river here. So this is our third stop of the day. Got an early morning start. The weather is cooperating. The blue sky and the sun is shining. This is wonderful. The first real stop point at the Alum Cave Trail is this uh, rock. Alum rock that you see behind us. You got to kind of go through the rock. It's kind of a fun climb up and there are many more points above us. Uh, we're not going to do all of that today because we need to leave the park soon and we need to get back to our next destination. So we're heading back. The Alum Cave Trail starts out with uh, a path right next to the creek. You can hear the constant water and uh, the stream is uh, flowing pretty fast. And it's a very pretty site with uh, lots of rhododendrons. And it's just really beautiful under the canopy. You can uh, see that it's running right next to the creek. And uh, you can basically see this all the way around. And so far it's been a beautiful trail. As much as we wanted to spend more time at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we had to leave to reach our next stop, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the Manhattan Project National Historical Park before they close. The visitor center shares a small space with the Children's Museum of Oak Ridge. There isn't much to do at the visitor center except to get the stamp and talk to the ranger about the history of the site. We made a wrong turn going to the visitor center and right, right into a checkpoint for the actual Oak Ridge National Lab, which is still very active. We were very lucky they allowed us to just turn around. They take security very seriously here. We heard that a food delivery car that made the same wrong turn was stopped and searched before they were allowed to turn around. Needless to say, we did not take any pictures here. The city of Oak Ridge itself was the historical site. The city was a sleepy town before the Manhattan Project came. In case you didn't know, Manhattan Project was a development of the first atomic bomb during World War II. Oak Ridge was one of three sites, along with Los Alamos, New Mexico, and Hanford, Washington. The uranium used in the atomic bomb was enriched at Oak Ridge, where a massive factory was built. The stamp of this side was interesting. It's one third of a circle. The other two thirds are at Los Alamos and Hanford. So you need all three to complete the stamp. Well, there wasn't much at the National Park Visitor Center. There was the excellent K-25 Museum by the Department of Energy in town. That museum told the full story of the Manhattan Project, the role Oak Ridge played, and the city that was built to support the project. The city of Oak Ridge has a peace bell and we brave the rain to ring it for world peace. All right, I'm ringing the bell. We have two parks on day four of our trip as we headed north into Kentucky. Day four of our trip, we started the day in the town of Wartburg, got our stamp for the Obit, 
Wild River Scenic Area, I think that's what it's called. Obit Wild Scenic River is all about the river actually and the rock climbing. Uh, there's a couple of trails here, but uh, what? if you're a kayaker and you want world-class kayaking down the uh, rapids, this is the place to come. And if you want to do rock climbing, it's also a good place to come because they have nice uh, cliffs that you can uh, climb up. But for us people who are not that strong or adventurous, and we're not kayakers, and we're certainly not rock climbers, you are basically uh, come here for a few nice walks. There's the Lily Bluff Overlook area, which has got uh, three trail, four trails that you can go on. Uh, three of them are quite short. And the one that I would absolutely recommend is the Overlook Trail, which is a wheelchair and stroller accessible with uh, gravel and boardwalk, and overlooks a fantastic view of the river and the cliffs. And the other one that we went on is the Boulder Trail. And uh, you go to a place called the Boulder Field. And that's only about two tenths of a mile from the parking area. So it's four tenths of a mile round trip. And, uh, so, and the uh, Lily Bluffs Overlook Trail is only three tenths of a mile one way. So it's uh, just a little over half a mile round trip. Those are well worth spending the time to, uh, to hike here. Big South Fork has lots of trails, lots and lots of trails. And uh, we had just gone to the Bandy Creek Visitor Center, had nice uh, subway sandwich there, like we always do for these trips. And uh, now we're over at Twin Arches area, doing a short loop today, taking it a little easier. because Loretta says we're doing the short loop, right? Yes, 1.4 versus 4 point something. So I think the short one is, is called This is um, our, what, third or fourth stop of the day? We started the day at Obit, and now we're we here. We started the morning at 8 o'clock. That's not that early. That's early. And we stopped by the East Rim Overlook before inside this park. Yep. Of course, we went to the visitor center to get our stamps and so on. While short, the Twin Archers Trail is not easy. Just look at these staircases. We'll go down here now, but what goes down must come back up. So be aware that you're going to have a lot of steps. This is the other arch of the Twin Arches Trail. Quite a big arch. And uh, we actually walked right on top, above that arch, without even realizing it. So we're at the sixth and the last stop of the day, Yahoo Falls, still in the uh, Big South Fork National River, I believe it's called. And uh, we're going down this set of steps, which supposedly gives us a waterfall. We'll go see. But uh, it's, uh, it's been a kind of a fun day driving on gravel. But we're here, six stop. Big South Fork is a big park. The top attractions for sure are Twin Arches, and the best attraction is Yahoo Falls. It's a spectacular fall with a nice cave in the back that you can uh, walk all the way behind the waterfall. And you can all, go all the way down to the bottom of the pond where the waterfall uh, falls. I uh, come down from the parking lot, it's a very short walk, but pretty strenuous because uh, you, you can go either to the upper fall, which is a fairly flat walk, or the much better path is to take the steps to the lower falls. It's 157 steps going down, and uh, you definitely get a little workout coming back up. But the scenery is well worth it. It is uh, fabulous. Uh, it's the tallest waterfall in Kentucky. So Yahoo Falls is in the Kentucky side of the park, and is in the uh, extreme northern part of the park. 
It's a beautiful day on day five of our journey, and today the theme is going to be Lincoln and the Civil War. We're going to make a long drive today to uh, Indiana, Lafayette to be exact, where we're stopping over. But along the way, we're going to see the Lincoln boyhood home, the Lincoln birthplace, and the Sp Mills Spring uh, battlefield. And all of that is Civil War related, and uh, looking forward to it. Come on, let's go. Our first stop was Mill Springs Battlefield National Monument. This was a quick stop to see the exhibit in the visitor center and the cemetery. Over 200 men died in the battle. Mill Springs was a pivotal battle in 1862 when the Union troops, with the help of the weather, won the battle that allowed the Union to control Kentucky. Next stop on this day of a long drive is Lincoln Birthplace. I have a full video on this Lincoln birthplace in the description box below, so check it out if you are interested in the details. This National Historical Park was much grander than I anticipated. There were two parts of this park, about 10 miles apart. The main part had a visitor center and the first Lincoln Memorial, dedicated in 1911, well before the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. There is a replica of the log cabin inside the memorial. Lincoln was born at Sinking Spring, the site of the memorial, but moved to Knob Hill, about 10 miles away, when he was two years old. He lived at Knob Hill until he was seven, when he moved to Indiana, the site of the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. A nice surprise greeted us when we went to Knob Hill. There was an event on that day to celebrate the grand opening of the newly restored tavern, which is now the visitor center. There was a Lincoln impersonator and the folks dressed in period clothing. It was a lot of fun on a beautiful day. Day six of our trip, and today is a great day because we're about ready to go visit a new national park we've never been to before. The Indiana Dunes National Park. Uh, that's one of the two national parks that was a primary purpose of this trip. So, Indiana Dunes, here we come. Beautiful sunny day, way to get started. We're here, we finally made it to our first full-fledged national park of our trip, Indiana Dunes. Day six of our trip, come on up. Ah, I'll be able to make it up because I can't keep up with you. you. Gotta remember, short legs. Okay, day six of our trip. Mm -hmm. uh, we're finally at a full fledged national park. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we go on our first hike of the day. We're beginnings of the Dunes Ridge Trail. Part of this national park obviously is the dunes, and that means sand. So, three quarters of a mile may not sound like much. But with the sand, uh, it's going to be a bit of a hike. And this morning, we uh, went to our usual visitor center thing and uh, got a bunch of stamps. He had asked for the hard to find stamps before he can get them. So we did that. No, all national parks there. All national parks. Stamps. Yeah, different places here. The different. Uh, sites here so they have them all in the back. Yes, they had to adjust all the dates because it hasn't been asked for in a month. <laughs> this is a treasure hunt part of it. Yeah. It's like a scavenger hunt. Well, where did you find out the information that they had all these extra additional stamps? The National Par uh, Park Travelers Club Master Stamp Database. So someone's been to it. Oh, well, yeah, there's a whole system on this. <laughs> yeah, you got to ask for it. There's notes on it you have to ask for it and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a, it's a pride to uh, collect them. I know, but that, that just means that someone has gone through and found out all these things, so they created the database. Oh, yeah. But if, if no one went, if the club didn't exist, people, normal people, wouldn't ask. That's true. There's a full video of Indiana Dunes in the description box below. So check it out. So there's a National Park Travelers Club. 
that uh, has about 5,000 members, and uh, they have a master stamp database where they record every stamp that's available in the National Park Service and others, like baseball stadiums and state capitals and stuff like that. But let's just stick with the National Park Service sites. And uh, each stamp has a unique identifier, and each location of where you might be able to get stamps has an identifier. Like, uh, you know, Kentucky 1, Kentucky 2, and so on and so forth. So there's a database that tells you exactly which stamp that you're supposed to be able to get from which location. Then they have stamp confirmations. And what that means is that each person that collects a stamp can uh, go say, Hey, you know, I, I collected this stamp on this date at this location. And then you can upload your copy, a picture of your copy of the stamp. And then they will record all of that. So it's a crowdsourced way of doing things. Lake Michigan on the shores. This used to be called the Indiana Dunes Lake National Lakeshore. It is now a national park. And this is the main attraction right here. The beach. Miles and miles of beach. This national park is actually not contiguous. The Lakeshore uh, National Park boundary is uh, separated by a state park, which has the tallest three dunes on the lakeshore, and a port. So you got to uh, have your shore interrupted by these things, but it's uh, 20 something miles long stretch right on Lake Michigan. After our usual Subway sandwich lunch, we join a ranger-led tour in the Bailey Tilburg area with a historical homestead and info on life in the Calumet region in the early and mid-1800s. All right, we are now on day seven of our Midwest uh, National Park adventure. And today is all about dunes, Indiana Dunes National Park. And we're going on the West Beach area. And we're going to go up this dune right behind me. And uh, we're going to see how it goes. The morning would be uh, the dunes. And it's supposed to rain in the afternoon, so we'll see what happens in the afternoon. Uh, but Indiana Dunes is all about dunes, so we're going to go check it out. Well, there are lots of national parks that's got sand dunes. For example, the Gray Sand Dunes National Park. For example, uh, White Sands National Park. And even Cobook Valley up in Alaska. Well, I would say that these dunes, in terms of height and grandeur, are nowhere near Gray Sand Dunes. But they're right by the lake, which makes it a different character. The first order of the day is the Three Loop Trail over at West Beach. And a part of that is a Dune Succession Trail, which is probably the best trail in the area. It is short, less than a mile for that particular loop. And it gets you right to Lake Michigan as well as uh, having on top of a dune. And because of the height of the dune, it is actually kind of strenuous, even though it's less than a mile. And not only that, you have to walk in soft sand, which makes it very difficult. The rest of the loop goes along this uh, pond called Long Lake, and uh, supposed to have very good place to view wildlife, as in birds. This is the uh, Paul H. Douglas Environmental Education Center, and there's a nice trail that goes from here in a loop, and then at the end of the loop, on the other side, it goes to the beach. We're going to do the loop today. So it's a pretty short walk along this, uh, I don't know if it's, it's a body of water of some sort. Maybe it's a swamp, I don't know. But that's what we're doing. Stop number two for the day. We just finished a long, well, not that long, three mile, three and a half mile, hike on the West Beach area, which is definitely the highlight of this park. We are now on our third stop of the day. We had uh, lunch at the place called New York Plate. Massive, if you uh, order the plate. Uh, the two of us could not finish the plate. And now we're at the Tolleson Dunes Trail. It's a little less than three miles. Just as we finished the Tolleson Dunes Trail, it started to rain. So, we decided to see what the Pullman National Monument and Historic Site was all about in nearby Chicago. 
I have a full video on Pullman, so check it out. The link is in the description box below. When we got there, the rain held off just enough for us to visit the site, which is both the building and the surrounding town. This is the Pullman National Monument and Historical Site, and that you see the clock tower where the main administrative building used to be. This park was established in 2015 as a national monument by Barack Obama. And, uh, you know, suffered some uh, fire and other losses, but it was restored. And the new visitor center, which is absolutely beautiful, opened on Labor Day of 2021. So we're here about a month later, lucky to catch a brand new visitor center. And this is uh, the main uh, building here of the Pullman Car Company. And the monument really talks about the Pullman Car Company and the company town that was uh, established here you know, by Pullman. And uh, you see over in the distance there, a train just pulling in for the uh, Chicago Rapid Transit or Metra. Uh, there is a train station there and there's lots of uh, trains running around on the busy line here as we were driving through. Uh, so the story is really about the company town and the labor movement in the late 1880s. There was a number of strikes that happened. Uh, the Pullman company refused to negotiate with the, uh, the workers and uh, you know there was a number of strikes and boycotts and all that so for that kind of history this is a wonderful place to come to uh, understand the history around all of that so this is Hotel Florence Hotel Florence was named after uh, Pullman's daughter and serves as the uh, major hotel for all of the visitors that come to uh, the Pullman factory and uh, it is right across the street from the Pullman factory itself, so it's nice and convenient for any of the visitors here. Obviously, it's fell into a little bit of disrepair. And uh, as Loretta says, this looks like it could be Haunted Mansion in Disneyland or something. So this is Market Square, where uh, Pullman built a uh, marketplace where they have shops and bakeries and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, this is actually uh, destroyed, but uh, there used to be three stories flanked by these uh, apartments on each corner. Uh, the original one was destroyed and uh, by fire. And then this one was uh, rebuilt in uh, 1892 as a central gathering place for folks. Okay, today is day eight of our trip. Today is all about Chicago. Yay! We're gonna go visit the city of Chicago. Either one of them have, have, of us have been there in person to tour the city. We pass through airports and stuff, but not in the city. So here we go, Chicago, here we come. We're taking a South Shore train to Chicago to avoid parking and have all the hassles of the city in Chicago. So here, waiting for the train now. The uh, Chicago deep dish pizza. Well, it's very tasty. The crust is different than um, what I'm used to eating. The New York pizza doesn't have the same type of crust. It tastes more. When you look here, it seems like it's more like a pie crust. 
It's a little bit flaky, so it's very tasty. And the bottom tastes the same. Um, loaded with cheese and it's delicious. Lots of filling, right? A lot of filling. Yeah. It's like eating a a um, a pie is a sense of like an apple pie kind of pie. Yeah. All right. It's good. Very good. Good morning. We are now on day nine of our trip. Yesterday was all about Chicago. We did a lot of walking, more than any other day, believe it or not, and so more of a 10 mile day in Chicago. Michigan Avenue, Magnificent Mile, River Walk, Sh uh, Lake Shore Walk, Navy Pier, and had deep dish pizza. Uh, figure in Chicago, you gotta do what the uh, famous food is here. That and the Chicago hot dog. So that was a good day. We're now headed towards Dayton for the Aviation Museum. Come on, let's go. Got a long drive ahead. The Dayton Aviation Heritage Museum in the middle of Dayton, Ohio. This is uh, actually where most of the work, engineering work and uh, testing and building of the uh, Wright Brothers flyers took place. While Kitty Hawk is certainly the first place where the actual working airplane took off, but uh, this is where much of the work is done. There's also a uh, Huffman Prairie where they did a lot of test flying after those initial flights. And there's a nice museum here. You can see the uh, bicycle shop. This is um, the fourth bicycle shop that the Brett Brothers own. The actual flyer was built uh, in the fifth and the sixth bicycle shop, which is just down the street over those porta potties uh, behind those buildings. Now that building doesn't exist anymore because uh, Henry Ford bought it and moved it to Michigan. So they don't have it here anymore. But uh, while you know, Kitty Hawk and uh, Kildawa Hills are more well known, the actual work that the Wright brothers did was actually here in Dayton, where they were from. This is Huffman Prairie. You can think about this as the first airport in the world because this is where the Wright brothers came after Kitty Hawk to perfect their flying machine. And this is, this is a place where they took a lot of the power flights, you know, as almost long lasting as the 30 something minutes that they can fly circles. And uh, they needed to have a place closer to home in order to test their flying machine. And this is a place where they picked. It's a large prairie with lots of open space. After the great exhibits in Dayton and Huffman Prairie, we made a short stop at the Charles Young Buffalo Soldiers National Monument. It was established in 2013 to uh, celebrate uh, Colonel Charles Young who uh, commanded the color troops back in the uh, late 1800s, 1900s. So we are on day 10 of our trip, and today the mission is to get to New River Gorge uh, National Park. Along the way, we are at the Hopewell Culture National Historical Site. You see those mounds in the back? Well, that's what we're gonna go see. They are artifacts and ruins and just burial, celebrating. Burial area burial areas uh, celebrating the Hopewell culture here in Ohio. So here we go. Well, this is just a giant field with all these mounds and uh, you can walk just about anywhere except you, know, you don't want to go on the mound because they ask you not to because it erodes the mounds. But these are just ancient burial grounds for the Hopewell culture. And uh, there's really just these mounds to see, but you're really here to appreciate what uh, the ancient burial grounds are. These are really, they say, anywhere from 1 to 400 AD. So it's been here for a while. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of these were uh, ruined when they built Fort Sherman next door. And uh, they had to preserve some of this stuff after they found the artifacts. If you came across mounds like these in the wild, you would think they're pretty weird, right? Yep, and uh, what that's, that's what the early people looked at and turned out to be burial grounds for the ancient uh, people here in the uh, time about 1 to 400 AD. Lots of archeological uh, stuff in the mound, burial grounds, and uh, different sizes signifying different things. Interesting history. After driving most of the day, 
we finally arrive at the Canyon Rim Visitor Center of the New River Gorge National Park. There's a full video on this park, so check it out. Link is in the description box. Well, we just arrived at our last stop of the trip, the New River Gorge National Park. One of the newest here, and we're about ready to see the namesake view. The bridge across New River. That's the iconic uh, image here. Well, if you go down 178 steps, this is the lower view, the lower bridge view. Uh, we drove across that uh, bridge on the highway. It didn't feel like anything, but down here, it sure looks spectacular. This is supposed to be the longest single span bridge. And it cuts the time to cross the river from 45 minutes. You gotta go all the way down there uh, to cross that bridge down there. And then come all the way back up. So 45 minute trip became a couple of minutes. Maybe even not, not even that. Well, we're here a couple of days before the scheduled annual bridge day where they're supposed to allow people to jump off of that bridge in a parachute or something, but they canceled it this week, this year, because COVID cases, I guess, is too high, so they canceled it, just like last year. The Canyon Rim Overlook Trail actually has three places you can watch the bridge. You can have the upper one, where you kind of go down the path, make a right, and you see above the bridge, you basically see the highway. Then you go down a little bit, all there to the left, you see the uh, top of the bridge, but from below the deck, and then you can go down even further to see uh, a view from further down, about a quarter of the way or so down the gorge. So you get three nice views of the bridge from here at the Canyon Rim Visitor Center. Okay, day 11 of our trip. We're at the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve. And uh, this is uh, a nice little view of our Airbnb tier with a beautiful waterfall right in the back. We are excited to go explore and do some real hiking today. He's excited. <laughs> the New River Gorge National Park and Preserve is actually quite big and you can easily spend an hour driving from one end of the park to another. We're now here at um, the uh, beginning really of the gorge and uh, this is going to flow north and eventually get to Canyon Rim where the big bridge is and that is really the iconic picture of this park. There's a lot of places to see in between and um, we're going to go hit every one of them. The Sandstone Falls area is on the southern part of the park and there is a beautiful uh, viewing platform as you see right here and uh, it's not a big fall, but it does stretch all the way across. It's very beautiful terrain and a bit noisy, but that's what happens when you have the falls. There is an island loop trail, which um, is about a mile and a nice walk in the woods. And you come out here and there's a broad walk that you can go right up to the place where you can look at the falls. Well, once again, it is that time of the day. It's the time of the day. At least we're now in a nice picnic area by the visitor center and we're in the shade and it's comfortable and we're going to have our lunch. We didn't do too much this morning, only about no. a mile or so hike to a sandstone waterfall. Yeah, we didn't It wasn't much, much of a waterfall, but still nice. No, it was very pretty. I thought it was very pretty. It was very serene and quiet. It's very wide, but very short. It's quiet and short and I think um, it's not a hustle and bustle place, at least at this area. So just take our time and enjoy nature while yes. we can. And now we eat. <laughs> no, you have to take me eating. Jeez. I have to take you, take you to a bite. There you go. Mm. Subway sandwich, our standard. Uh -huh. Historic Thurmond used to be a bustling rail yard or railroad stop with uh, buildings like these that are um, built to serve the train crew and workers. There's still an Amtrak station here. They, there's an Amtrak stop here. And at its height, they used to do 15 passenger trains per day. Not anymore though. The Wren Trail near Thurman. On a nice fall day, you can see all the leaves on the ground falling. 
Starts off from the parking lot next to the creek on a pretty flat trail. We're gonna go down about a mile and a half, mile and three quarters, and turn around because we're told that uh, one of the uh, bridges is closed. So you can only go about one and three quarters miles before you have to turn around. So that's what we're gonna do. We made a quick stop at Grand View at the end of the day. What fantastic view. We came back a couple of days later for a more in-depth look. Day 12 started with watching a man fishing on the river behind our Airbnb. He was dodging raindrops. We had to do the same on this rainy day. The first stop of day 12 was the Hinton Railroad Museum with interesting artifacts from an earlier time. I went to get the all-important stamp, but they didn't have it there. I called later on to the town hall and they were nice enough to mail me the stamp. The next stop was Beckley Exhibition Coal Mine, where we braved the rain and saw an exhibit of a coal town that told the story of a coal miner. The highlight was the coal mine tour. We had an excellent guide. I have a full tour on this channel, so check it out in the description box below. Homestead part of the coal miners exhibit museum. The rain continues, so we had to kill some time, and we stopped at the Tamarack Plaza, where they sell local craft items as we waited for the rain to stop. The rain has finally stopped, so we managed to get out to the Canyon Rim area, and we're hiking now the uh, Long Point Trail. It's probably the only hiking we can do today. That's all right. At least we got out, and uh, this place is actually quite crowded. I think for two reasons. Number one, we're here on what otherwise would be Bridge Day, which is canceled because of the pandemic. And also because everybody's cooped up in the morning and early afternoon from the rain. So they're all out here doing a hike. We are on day 13 of our 14 day trip. This morning, we woke up to nice crisp fall air, bright sunshine, temperature in the 40s. Now it's warmed up to the mid 50s. and. We're on our first hike of the day in the Grandview area. It's going to be a good day. The weather is going to be good. And then we're going to just explore a couple of places in this wonderful park called the New River Gorge. The tunnel trail starts off at the Grandview Visitor Center parking lot and it goes uh, up some steps and then loops around to a ball field where the uh, had coal miners uh, having baseball games to keep themselves occupied. And then you loop around and you see this uh, fantastic site with the rock outcropping that you get to walk underneath. And it's a short trail, one mile round trip. And uh, it looks fabulous. After getting warmed up with a short tunnel trail, we got on the Grandview Rim Trail that ran along the rim with sweeping views of the gorge and plenty of overlooks. There were steps at the end for the final climb to Turkey Spur for a dramatic view of the river. We could have driven right to the end of the trail, but what's the fun in that? The 3.2 mile round trip hike in the crisp fall air was just perfect.
The next stop gave us some history and exercise as we descended down the steep headhouse trail for about a mile to the headhouse, where the coal from the mines loaded onto a conveyor belt. The coal was transported to the rail depot by the river. It was an interesting relic of the past technology to get coal out of the mountain and onto the train. So the coal comes out of the mine on these rail cars and then they get into the head house. And at the head house, that's when they transfer the coal from the rail cars onto a conveyor in the lower level. Let's go see the conveyor in the lower level. So this is where the coal gets dumped from the rail that's up there down into the conveyor that's down here and the giant uh, gear that you see here moves the conveyor down to the rail depot which is by the river. And there you see the red roof of the uh, conveyor cover all the way down to the river. The hike back up was short but steep which gave us a good workout to end the day. Day 14 was just a boring drive home from New River Gorge. This was an excellent trip. 14 days to visit 13 national park locations and the big city across seven states, including three national parks. Two of them were new parks we wanted to visit since last year. There was a good mix of nature, hiking, history, and culture. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this Midwest adventure. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States. Follow along by hitting the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and please share it with everybody that you know.